Hi, I'm Diane Brady, Assistant Managing Editor at Forbes, and I am here with Jenna McGregor, who is our, I like to call you future of work guru, but you cover all things related to the future of work, Jenna, and we have been hearing this term, you and I lately, of quiet quitting. What is that? It's the thing that is clogging my inbox more than anything <laughs> in the world right now, Diane. No, I, I think most people have probably heard this term by now. It's everywhere now. Um, if you've paid any attention lately, you've seen people talking about this idea of quiet quitting, which came from TikTok videos where people were talking about basically dialing back some at work, you know, uh, doing in some it's cases like work to rule, right? Like I'm not going to quit, but I'm going to do the minimum to not get fired. Is it the, the latest version of coasting? I, I suppose it is, but, but what is the, like, because I've heard quiet quitting referred to as something leaders should do as a good thing. And so what are the kinds of pitches that you're getting and is this just fleeting or is it actually saying something like that's here to stay? And I think, I think there's something real here, but kind of the uproar about it has gotten a bit, uh, a bit in a tizzy. I mean, there's a little too much of it. Um, but I, I do think, you know, we've been dealing for the past two years with hearing people talking about the great resignation and about, uh, you know, all the ways work and life have blurred. And so for some people, this is about setting boundaries and saying work is not going to be my entire life after a couple of years where it was hard to set those boundaries. I think there's a range. There's people who are who are looking at it like that and there's people who are saying I'm going to do the absolute bare minimum and 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 nothing else. But I do think your point about CEOs or bosses quietly quitting you know, a lot of the conversation I'm seeing about this is that we need to stop putting this on the workers and we need to say, you know, what can organizations do to change their expectations? Um, I had a great conversation with the professor yesterday who um, came up with the idea. Basically, his first research was on engagement. And oh, do, should we thank him for that or? I hate that term as well. A whole new segment on engagement to come. But so he came up. That must be a long time ago. I've heard that word for ages. It was. Thirty-two years ago, nineteen ninety. But I called him because you know this whole discussion about quiet quitting really has brought up this issue of engagement because I think what's happened is as corporations have become obsessed with this idea of engagement, overly so. He would agree. Um, they actually kind of snatched it and used it in a different way than he first meant it. They've set the expectation for what like a good worker is higher, right? Being an engaged worker is being, you know, above and beyond, raising your hand for everything, working 24 seven. And I think people are rebelling against that. I would have actually thought the opposite, which is this focus on engagement has made us so focused on um, the happiness and mental health and the perks and, uh, you know, the free meals and the movie. Okay, we're not getting, I'm, I'm laying out all kinds of things we don't get, so let me stop. But uh, that it maybe raises the expectations of the worker as to um, the amount of time off they should get, the, the accommodation for mental health. I'm sounding retrograde here, but is that, that does feel like a bit of the opposite side of the coin of, you know, there's a certain amount, there's the things you want to do and there's the things you kind of need to do. It can't all be joy. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a balance. And and the interesting thing is, I think a lot of those things you mentioned can kind of have a Band-Aid approach, right? I mean, if I get a calm Headspace app to use on my phone or a few free therapy sessions, is that going to improve my mental health in the same way that, you know, a little more tolerable workload would do more, more um, money <laughs> uh, you know I mean, that, that you need to change the work treat the symptom not the so so let me i i, I want to ask for some advice for people because you know what does quiet quitting look like and then what do you do about it i mean i'll give you i'll start quiet quitting to me is you're on a zoom call and everybody's got their their cameras off even if it's an external call 
important call. There's certain people that says, you know what? You're never going to see their face. That's sort of a quiet quitting gesture to me. Yeah, I think it's it, that that's a sign of disengagement, which is what a lot of people say this really is, um, the same term. Or, <clears throat> you know, another one would be, I think, just never raising your hand for a, another a, a big assignment, a stretch assignment. Um, you know, maybe being unavailable after hours when on the occasion when it's really needed, not all the time, but, you know, when a, when something's important. And I think that's the interesting debate here, right? Is 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 that quitting? Is that bad? You know, where's the line between being somebody who cares and is working hard and somebody who's checking out? So if you are managing quiet quitters, uh, you spoke to um, the professor. I know you speak to many professors, consultants, CEOs. What, it, what are the ways, without using the word engagement, of course, that you can bring a quiet quitter back to being the enthusiastic source of life that we know they can be? Well, his, his words were, you know, just the, it's not rocket science. Like, it's a conversation. I mean, it's, you, can't, you can't fix it by measuring, taking surveys, ask people what they need, what, what's causing them to act that way, and then, you know, work with them to fix it. I mean, it's kind of simple. And if not, perhaps not so quiet quitting. It's called quiet firing at that point, perhaps. So. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jenna McGregor, thank you very much uh, to be continued. Thanks for having me.